Yep, you're seeing right. We are in Skagway, Alaska. Finally, I made it to Alaska. We crossed the sign yesterday and what a joyous time that was for me. We are staying right here in number 22 on the map. And it's the uh, Pollen Pond RV Park. And it's a great park. From where we're at, we can see the cruise ships come in. So that's not so great because, you know, we were supposed to be on one in 20. 20, and there's but, two cruise ships here today. Right. But this is a super, super cute town. So we're going to take you and let you see. So yesterday when Nancy crossed over into Alaska, it was her 50th state. And we regret that we weren't videoing yesterday because she didn't get to, we didn't get to. But here's some pictures of her celebration. I think uh, you'll enjoy that. Um, we met some random folks there at the sign. There was about 20 of us uh, all together and everybody right. celebrated Nancy. A family and in two different <laughs> RVs. Nancy celebrated it. So, uh, hey, we left Whitehorse and we came down here because the weather here is so much better. So we decided we're just gonna hole up here for a few days and let the weather uh, warm up up north before we get back on the Alaskan highway. But um, let's take you into town. It's really beautiful and we're, we're just having a blast here. So we are here at number 22, and we are gonna walk this path down to Broadway, and then on Broadway and then State Street are all kinds of shops and um, brewers, uh, just you name it, it's here. They have a train that runs through town. So we're gonna take you down, we're gonna let you see what's going on. So we're getting ready to show you. We're gonna turn the corner down here, and it is just the cutest town. But they have like these rail cars, but it's a car. It's not like the old rail cars that you would think of with the track down the middle of the road. So you gotta take a look at this. Sorry, street car, not rail car. Most of the downtown area is actually a national historic park. So many of the buildings in here are owned and operated by the National Park Service as a preservation of history uh, of a mining town. It's uh, pretty cool. Uh, we've looked at several of these. Oh, what you got there? The map. And they said you could come in and video, so get in there. Give me the dog and go, baby, go. I guess we're gonna go inside and show you uh, the inside here. There's a couple buildings like this in town. This just happens to be one of them. No offense to the people from Texas, but I laughed when I saw this shirt. Look at this. So Alaska is just so huge. I mean, we're finding this out. It's like, um, when you look at Alaska on the map, you have no idea how massive it is. And when you look at the roads, you think, oh, that's just a short distance between two places. I mean, it could literally take you a day to get there. So, yeah, it uh, has. <laughs> I once seen a picture of Alaska overlaid over the Midwest and it took over most of the Midwest. So uh, that's something, I mean, we were prepared for this trip, but just really had no way of comprehending that. So here in Skagway, the National Park Service uh, uh, operates the Bill Moore Homestead. So if um, you look over here, this was actually the first building in front of me here. We're going to walk over there. This is actually the first building in Skagway. It's under some restoration right now, but uh, this is it here behind me. Uh, it was. This is called the Moore Homestead. So. Um, what 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 went on here is that Moore actually claimed this whole land as a homestead here, and um, he, his plan was not to do mining but to mine the miners. In other words, he was going to build businesses in here that that uh, cater to the miners, and he, you know you know how that goes. They probably overcharge them in prices and, and everything like that. So he's going to make a fortune, his fortune off of the miners coming in. So. Down the way there uh, is where the docks were and the boats would come in. Well, what the problem was is 
he got here I think like 10 years before everybody else and he was setting up his mine his mine um, supply operation knowing that this was going to be the next big boom and uh, when thousands of people started unloading off the ships he had no way of controlling um, I mean people just set up on land it was his built houses and and he had no way of policing this because there was no law here in this area uh, later on in the early 1900s he did file a lawsuit and won but by that time you know his winning was was there was nothing because you know by that then the gold mine the gold rush was over and such as that so anyway he first started out in that house and then he built this house here behind him and uh, his wife never came over but his son actually settled in this area and uh, helped him go on so let's take go inside and look at the house um, keeping in mind that you know it never it never materialized for what he thought he was going to own the whole town and there's a lot of stuff going on so anyway that's how i understand things may not be 100 percent accurate as far as history goes but uh, it's a it's a pretty neat uh, place to look around This is not actually just a display, it depicts um, what it actually looked like. And so you would think that all this stuff hanging on the walls is just a display here, but they have a flash that says, uh, the overall impression of the Victorian parlor is a crowded weather of patterns and elaborate objects from various periods. So um, this is all set up in here as to you know what it would look like. and. Um, you know, people would drag out everything they own and put it in the parlor, uh, you know, to make them look uh, wealthy or powerful or whatever image they were trying to portray. This talks about how um, they were avid recyclers even back in the day because you know natural materials were hard to come by here and so they took uh, scraps from old newspapers and things like that and pasted on the wall as wallpaper you can see here uh, they got a display of that going on so you know they were recyclers back before it was popular So throughout town they have these uh, little different bronze sculptures here. They just did a presentation here in this little enclave here. So if you look at this man's face, he's got the look of despair on his face and, and failure. Most So out of 100,000 people that came up through this area, only 30,000 actually made it to the claims. And by the time they got there, most of the claims were already spoken for. Um, so in today's money, for an outfitter to come and buy all this outfit, it would probably be about $130,000. So uh, the average person, even today, doesn't have that type of money to, you know, to just to just come on, a, on an adventure like this and try to strike it rich. So um, the reason a lot of these people were despaired in that is there a lot of times they had the backing of their whole family, extended family, people gave them money. Uh, there was a lot of people that believed in them and then to get here and fail uh, Just brought on so much despair. So I hate to be uh, Discouraging and depressing in this this clip, but it's got to say that uh, you know um, A lot of people made it rich, but there was a lot of people that just ended in despair. So If you look around these crates that are stacked up here, this would represent they made them take uh, one ton of of goods up the mountain just to get to the claim because they needed a year's supply so um, they, sometimes it would take them several trips to get up there or they'd hire pack mules or uh, packers people to pack it so uh, I really like this little area here I think they've done a really good job of depicting that and uh, you just look at the 
look at despair on this guy's face because he came all this way perhaps from around the world someplace and uh, just couldn't make it. RV parks at the end of the area and they got this marina kind of surrounding the RV park. And everyone there, the fishermen are loading their boats up uh, for the summer. So they're loading their nets and all their supplies. Looks like those, they're cool. getting ready for the salmon run. Yeah. So we, uh, every day we can see people here working on their boats. More and more each yeah, day. More and more. Yeah. So, uh, so we're walking back to the to the campsite but the ship is back here too so <laughs> there's a bunch of people walking back to their cruise ship also but uh, unfortunately we are not going to the cruise ship <laughs> no not this time we just walked over here from our campground with a lovely couple from England loved talking with them anyway you know, the Bible tells us not to covet, but I'm really having a hard time right now not coveting these people. I don't know people. if you can see it here. Let's see. Getting yeah. on these two ships. <laughs> and uh, this couple said that they are smaller ships. They've seen larger. But you know what? Right now, a tugboat sounds really good to me. I'm pretty happy with the runaway and the Astro van. <laughs> well, I love them too, but you know, it's been three weeks and we yeah, have we're a long talking, way to we're go. We're talking to a lot of people that are on this cruise ship. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So, you know what? We thought we'd just walk down here and see the cruise ship and dock. And uh, let you see how the other half lives. Yep. So we're going to end our day here in Skagway. And tomorrow we are taking a drive to Dai. We understand that was a town at this around the same time as Skagway, but it did not make it. And there's an old um, cemetery there. So we're going to take a drive tomorrow and check that out. So stay tuned. We're getting ready to hike back here to the Gold Rush Cemetery and uh, they have listed here the Gold Rush people, right? Who had passed away and are buried in here. I think there's other people too though. I don't know. There's, they just list the prominent members. We don't, right. we're we're going to walk back there. They just list the prominent members in the cemetery. Um, there was, uh, the, if you remember, we went to the Soapy Smith um, Museum bar or whatever you might say uh, the other day, uh, and he's buried back here. So I don't know what we're going to find. We'll, well, let's go back and look. We're just taking a ramble this morning. <laughs> remember reading about this this is supposedly the largest chunk of gold in Alaska uh, somebody put it here at their grave but <laughs> pretty pretty catchy okay so there are other graves back here but the sign was just listing like the prominent members of the, the community. famous ones I don't know but anyway it's really a cute little cemetery and I don't know if you can hear it but there is a roaring river right behind us here I was uh, thinking that the graves were more spread out. There's a lot more people buried back here than what I, th than yeah. what I thought. And, um, but it's just nestled here in the woods. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, amazing that, you know, these uh, graves are well over 100 years old. And yeah. they still look uh, pretty, pretty good. I don't I'm know if pretty sure somebody's taking care yeah, of these. But yeah. uh, anyway, it's a little chilly here in the it's shade. It's very nippy. I'm going <laughs> to have uh, to move on. We're going to keep walking. As I walk through here, one of the things that stands out to me is the fact that these people are all really young. I see like 19, 22 years old, 33, it looks like 56 years old. Uh, this was a hard life and a lot of people that came, you know, for the gold rush never made it back home. And um, some, they said that their family, they, you know, they wish their families goodbye and told everybody goodbye and their families never seen from them again uh, just because nobody really understood the harshness of living in an environment some such as this back in the day so
We've drove the approximate nine or 10 miles from Skagway over here to Dai. A lot of it's gravel road, beautiful scenery, but we made it to the historic town site. So um, there was two towns here. Dai was here first actually, uh, but uh, because of its port and various other reasons, um, it, it didn't make it, um, but it was a thriving town. There was, I think they said 10,000 people here at one time. It, now it's a total ghost town. There's nothing here. Um, I've never been back here, but we're gonna walk back and take a look and see what's left. From what I understand, there's not much back here, um, but uh, let's, let's go back and look at it. The sign is interesting here. It says a return to nature. So it's talking about um, how the town sprung up and then now it's just slowly returning back to nature. And you can see uh, from this picture here, all the buildings, so the town peaked in 1898 as thousands of gold seekers traveled through Dai on their way to Dawson City, Canada and the Klondike gold fields. So look at that. We're gonna walk down this trail here. And um, so once upon a time, this would have been like a town and there's nothing here. So this is Scow Street and 2nd Second Avenue and just imagine a bustling town here and now there's just nothing but trees. Every once in a while you can catch a glimpse of you know the remnants of things maybe old building foundations steel straps this is one of the areas here where there was a building but uh, for the most part it's just pretty much reclaimed back to nature there's first avenue so you know you could turn and go down first street and there would have been buildings all along the sides here and businesses that were catering to the miners coming in. Today it's a nice peaceful walk and these trees are amazing. See on the sign right here it shows you what uh, the wharf area would have looked like in Dai's freight yards uh, in 1898. This is um, where I'm standing right in front of the remains of the Vining and Wilkes warehouse. It says uh, competition was fierce as anxious gold seekers clamored to get to the Klondike. Seeing a need, about 15 freighting companies quickly started in Dye in 1898. The J.S. Vining and A.B. Wilkes built a warehouse to store supplies coming off the ships. Wilkes summed up the frenzy by saying, all they thought of was hurry, hurry, hurry. What a crazy mess of humanity, he said. So one of the things that I did learn and I found interesting is uh, a lot of people made millions of dollars from the gold rush, but never found, never, um, never were gold miners themselves. They called it mining the miners. <laughs> so, um, it appears to me that that's where a lot of the money was made. Uh, just the frenzy to become wealthy. You got to think about it. There's a life lesson there. I want to walk down here to the water. I believe this is the water area down here. But you can see there's just a lot of remnants of, of the days gone by. All right, made it down to the harbor or the wharf area. You can see there's there's nothing here. This was part of the downfall is that the slope coming up is gradual and uh, just wasn't suited well for the ships. But the thing is, is the Chilkoot Trail that goes over the mountain that was that was a good pass. So you know what you lacked here, you gained uh, going over the mountain. So. 
Um, I mean, that's eventually why, you know, the railroad went over to Skagway and Skagway uh, boomed and this died. But this was an old uh, Indian path trail that went right out of here. So the miners would come and go right up through there. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. It's really peaceful today. I can imagine <laughs> back in the day when all of those people were scurrying and scammering. I think I've said it before, but I'll just repeat it here. The, um, they said uh, out of the 100,000 people that tried to get up in the Klondike, just a small percentage, maybe 30,000 made it. And out of them, very few people even found gold. By the time the gold rush happened and the big push to get there, most of the claims had already been uh, spoken for in stakes. So the guys wound up going up there, kind of working for cuts of uh, other people's gold. But um, yeah, great walk. All right, I gotta hoof it back to the van. But if you're down here, this is a, this is a cool little piece of history to take a look at. There's no intact buildings, right? There's you know, just you can see those little mounds of dirt and they've got it partitioned off here into different streets where they had been. So it's definitely worth coming and looking at, but got to get back to the van. Right here is the primitive camping area in Dai at the in the National Park. Um, if you just find you a little a spot that's suitable for you. Um, I am wishing I was over here camping, but Nancy really wanted to be in Skagway and she really wanted to be in cell phone service for right now. So uh, we made a little compromise and um, we're just coming over here visiting for the day. But uh, take a look around, it's amazing. So this is the transportation corridor. So out there was the town of Dai that we were at earlier. And we're making our way back out, but uh, so this is where the steamships would come up. And I wanna show you something here. Look here on this placard. Remember when we were on Scow Street, the freight yard on, in Dai? This is a picture of what that looked like back in the day now remember we were just down there and there's all these overgrown trees and everything but uh that's what it looked like in 1898. we found this amazing pull out and i don't know there's just no words the mountains and then little skagway below and then you have the cruise ships you can see that below us is an airstrip where the uh, where the planes can land in here and the, the town is really small so yeah. Um, you can pretty much see the whole town from right this area. Let me turn the camera around and I'll show you where our RV park is because we can see it from here. So as you can see, there's, uh, there's two cruise ships in port right now. And then if you move up, I'm trying to make sure the camera's in view here. There's a patch of trees down, there's the marina. And then there's a patch of trees right there. That's the RV park where we're staying at. So you can see that, um, from the RV park to town is just a, just a short walk. It only takes us about 10 minutes to walk in there. And then there's the, the town. And uh, pretty much out here it ends. So earlier today, when we were at that cemetery, that's, that's at this end of town. And um, then the main street where you've been seeing most of the uh, shots of us and the shops and everything like that is right in that area right there so um quaint little town not much not much here um the cruise ships are there but right below the cruise ship is where the ferry comes in so there's a car ferry and a just a fast person's ferry um that goes over to haynes if you want to we had considered that but we opted out of it and decided we'd just drive back up into uh, uh, whitehorse from here so that's it. Man, it's beautiful. We've been here for three days and we love it. Good morning. 
after a wonderful, wonderful three days in Skagway. I know there's not a lot to do there, but it was just nice to be in the warm sunshine and in one spot for three whole days. So when we came down to Skagway, we didn't video any of that trip uh, down. So we thought what we'll do is we'll add that on to this, the ending of this video. So you guys can see what the drive is. So we've got, I don't know, 30 something miles yeah. back up to the Alaskan highway. And oh, there's a hummingbird. Oh. <laughs> Come right by. Sorry, got distracted. Uh, we got about 30 miles to go up. To, uh, we're going to cross the Canadian into Canada, back into Canada, and uh, get back on the Alaskan Highway. But man, we've had a great time here. Really, to Beaver Creek? Is that That's right? That's right. That's right. Still the, on the um, Alaskan Highway. The we've been sitting here waiting, but I don't think it's going to happen. The railway that uh, comes takes the cruise ship passengers up to up into Canada comes right by here and we've been sitting there waiting on it but I don't think it's going to happen. No. Hey, enjoy Sorry, the Doug. drive. Enjoy the drive up back up to the Alaska Highway with us. Okay, what better place to put our Alaska sticker on than right here at the Alaska sign. So, um, we're pretty excited about this. This has been a big goal and uh, one that's been a little bit difficult and hard to reach so uh, this gives me great honor to tag our van with the Alaska sticker there you go How about that? That's going to end our three days in Skagway. We had so much fun, or at least I did. Anyway. No, I did too. It I was think great. Ricky did too, because <laughs> you know, the shop owners gave him salmon dog treats, and I did find a package, so we are sparingly going to give him those. He made out pretty good. Yes. If you ever have a chance to go to Skagway, do it by ship, by car, however. Hey, thanks for watching our video of Skagway. We had an excellent time and the drive down is beautiful. Hey, thanks for joining us and we will see you again next Sunday. Bye now.